Now that we know how to represent relations, we will continue looking at the types of relations we can work with or that will be useful to us. Pause the video here, see if you can find domain and range of this relation and actually just study this relation. Go ahead. Hopefully you got the answer to be domain of H is I, C, F, and E, and range is 3, 5, 6, and 9. So now let's look at another example. Let's take a look at the function G and see if you can pause the video here and find its domain and range. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. I really want you to try, so don't just wait for me to tell you the answer. Please pause. Go ahead, you can do it. The worst that will happen is you have the wrong answer, and that's okay. Just try, okay? Remember, our goal here is to get you to learn the material. So pause and see. It's okay if you have wrong answers. You can do this. Come on, let's go. Assuming you've come back, let's see what the answers you got are and compare to what I have. So the domain of this function g would be 0, 6, 7, 9, and the range would be just 1 since all the elements are connected to 1. Let's look at another relation, let's say f. So in this f relation, Again, pause the video, find domain and range, and let's see what you got. We'll give you a few moments. So here, the domain would be I, C, F, and E, and the range will be 3, 5, 6, and 9. So now, if you look at all of the three relations that we have looked at, why don't you study them together and see what are the similarities and differences between them? Especially the H and the F, because they both have the same domain and range, but are there any differences in the two relations? Go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can come up with. Study them, and if I was not there and I couldn't see what you see, how would you describe these relations as being different or similar from each other. Go ahead, pause the video and see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, let's start with it. You can see in this relation, one of the input corresponds to more than one output, like i corresponds to 6 and 9. Whereas in function g, more than one input corresponds to the same output. Like 0 and 6 both correspond to 1, even 7 and 9, so all four of them. But in F, all the inputs have a unique output. So the difference between them is that you can have relations in where one object can correspond to several outputs. Several inputs can correspond to a single output, whereas you can also have a relation in which every single input corresponds to a unique output. Relations in which each input corresponds to a unique output are called functions. So in our case here, g and f are both functions, but h is not, because in h, i has two outputs corresponding to it. Whereas in g and f, every single input corresponds to a single output, even though in g, one output corresponds to several inputs. That's not a problem, as long as all inputs correspond to a unique output, then we say that relation is a function. So here are two algebraic relations in front of you, and y equals 3x plus 1, and y equals x minus 5. Do you think these relations, you can have y a function of x. In other words, does an input of x produce a single output? If your answer is yes, then it will be a function. Think about it, please. Pause the video and tell me whether these two relations 
y is a function of x. Assuming you've come back, you can see every single x I can think of for real number I put in for x. Output will become a 3 times that number plus 1 or that number minus 5. So you will get a unique output. So yes, both of these algebraic relations, y is a function of x. So now pause the video here and see if you can come up with a relation y and x relation in which an input of x produces two different outputs of y, making it not a function of x. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can come up with. Go ahead, don't just wait for my answer. Remember, unless you try, this is not going to work. So pause the video here, even though I'm not there. Don't be distracted. Remember becoming mindful. Breathe and sit and think. Remember solving mathematical problems or thinking about mathematical problems or posing mathematical problems requires tenacity and making sure that you, all of you, your whole essence is present, sitting idle, thinking. Go ahead, think. Assuming you've come back, what'd you come up with? Several of you tried many different things and even if you were unsuccessful, that process of trying will pay you great dividends. So I can think of how, okay, let's say input is four. I need to produce two outputs. So x is four and I can say y squared. x equals y squared will do that. Why? Because when y is two, two squared is four. When y is negative two, two negative two bracket squared is also four. So that would be a relation, y squared equals x, an algebraic relation between x and y, where y is not a function of x. But now, once you have functions, you can see how I can distinguish between which y am I talking about. Am I talking about 3x plus 1 or x minus 5? So in order to be able to distinguish between different functions, mathematicians have come up with a different notation. So let's start with definition of function, and then we'll look at function notation. So a function is a relation in which every individual input has a unique output. Remember, that means you can have several inputs corresponding to a single output, but you cannot have a single input corresponding to multiple outputs. So a function is a directed relation where each individual input has a unique output. The input is called the independent variable or the argument of a function, and the output variable is called the dependent variable or the function value. To distinguish between the two y coordinates, given that the input is x in both cases, is as follows. You choose a small letter like a f or a g or a h, or you can choose like a word for the name of the function, and then for the input you have the variable or the argument, and you write that as follows. f parentheses x equals 3x plus 1, and then you would read that as f of x equals 3x plus 1. Not f times, but f of x equals 3x plus 1. So pause the video here and see if you can come up with a notation for y equals x minus 5. Go ahead, choose the small letter, input, and rewrite it as a function notation for y equals x minus 5. Go ahead, pause the video and decide how you want to represent it using the function notation. Assuming you've come back, let's say I want to pick the letter g for the name of the function, so I would write g of x equals x minus 5. So here we have 
two functions f and g that represent what we had before. But now when I say f of x, I will know I'm talking about the first function, 3x plus 1. And I talk about g of x, you will know I'm talking about y equals x minus 5. There's a lot of advantages of using this notation, but we need to make sure that you are comfortable with this notation. So let's play with it a little bit to dissect all the components of it and then see how to work with it. So a function has three components. The small letters f and g are the name of the function. You can also use something other than the small letters f and g, capital letters or actual names of things. Those can all be used as name of a function. The second component is the input or the x that you see there. So that is the input of a function or argument of a function. And then the whole thing, the f of x and the g of x, that whole thing is the output or function value. So again, function has three components, name, argument, output, or function value. Name can be anything, small letters, capital letters, or names. The input are usually variables or objects or numbers. That is the input that goes inside a function. And then the function spits out a value that is called the function value or the output. Let's work with the function f of x equals 3x plus 1 and get to know how to evaluate functions using this notation. So that x that is the input can be anything. For example, you can think of it as f of blank equals 3 times blank plus 1. We can replace the blank with an input. So let's say I put in a for x. Then I'll have 3a plus 1 as my output. So f of a equals 3a plus 1. What if you change the a to, say, 5? Pause the video here and see if you can figure out what f of 5 would be. Go ahead. Assuming you've come back, so you're going to replace the x with the 5. So we're going to have 3 times 5 plus 1, or 16, will be our answer. So 5 is our input. And 16 is our function value at x equals 5. Let's talk about when we had a. Then we would have a would be our input, and 3a plus 1 would be our output. So we might now know how to mechanically evaluate function values given an input, but now we need to figure out what is the meaning of it. So what does it mean when my input is a, and I end up with my output to be 3a plus 1, and so on. So let's work with the function f of x equals x squared, and take a look at what does it mean to say f of a equals a squared. It will help if we look at the graphical representation of f of x equals x squared. So let's, instead of a, take some values like x equals negative 2, negative 1, and so on, and make a chart. So let's represent some values of this function in tabular form. Then we'll plot these points, and then we'll see what it means to say f of a equals a squared. All right, let's plot the points. So we have negative 2, 4, negative 1, and 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So here we have all our points. If we plot more points and connect them all, all the points that satisfy that relation will look like this, which is called a parabola. So this green curve represents the function f of x equals x squared in graphical form. So a crudest way to get graphical form is to plot a whole bunch of points and connect them, and you can see what shape it takes. So how do we make sense of a f of a, then? Let's take a look at it. If a is any point on the x-axis, then a f of a 
would have to be a point on the green curve so that the height, which is the y coordinate, is the value of f of a, and a is how far from the x axis you are. So a is the x, and this here is the y coordinate, and you can see no matter where you go, a and f of a simply give you a point on the curve. So once we understand that we have a f of a point on the curve, you can take another point, a plus h. For h negative, it's on the left. So if you move the h closer to 0, the point will get closer and closer to a f of a. If h is positive, you will move away on the right side from a f of a. So left, h is negative. On the right side, h is positive. That's how you move on the curve. So a plus h, f of a plus h simply means x coordinate is a plus h, y coordinate is f of a plus h. So in general then, a f of a can be any point on the curve, and those are simply x and y coordinates on y equals f of x graph, which means we can use f of x and y interchangeably. Since functions are relations, let's review how we can represent functions then. So clearly, what we just looked at was function notation. So f of x equals 3x plus 1, or g of x equals x minus 5, where f is the name of the function, x is the input or argument, and 3x plus 1 is the output. What other ways can we represent functions? Since we know function is a specific type of relation, we can represent them in the same way as we represented relations. So let's go over that. So in the tabular form, we can make a chart, columns x and y, where the first one you'll have y equals f of x. And so now we have negative 2 for x, and f of negative 2 function value is going to be 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, plus 1, which will give you negative 5. And you can verify that that's exactly what the points are going to look like. Same thing with g of x. You will have negative 2 minus 5, which will give you negative 7. And you can verify the other coordinates yourself. So that's the tabular form. Let's look at the other forms. In the set representation, set notation representation, we write the functions as ordered pairs. So the f function can be written as x comma 3x plus 1, where x is a real number, and g can be written as x comma x minus 5, where x is a real number. For graphical, we use our tabular form. We can plot points uh, in function values. So x is the input, and function values will be the y-coordinate. Like f of 2, for example, will be 7. So you would plot the coordinate to 7. And when you do that, you will notice that it becomes a line. Some of you have may seen lines in the slope intercept form. So here the slope is 3 and the y intercept is 1. In the g function, y equals x minus 5, slope would be 1 and y intercept is negative 5. For the verbal output is 1 more than 3 times the input is your f function. Output is 5 less than the input is your g function. The algebraic notation, you would write it as an equation with two variables, y equals 3x plus 1. So y is a function of x. And otherwise, you can write function notation, which is f of x equals 3x plus 1. And the g function would be y equals x minus 5, or g of x equals x minus 5. So you can see, since relations can be represented in different ways, we can use the same representations for functions, since functions are a special case of relations. They are special kind of relations where each input has a unique output.